guys and welcome to Heidi's Fish Tank. Today I wanted to take a little trip to my freshwater quarantine tank. Um, talk a little bit about my freshwater quarantine system, what I have going on, and just give you guys a look at it. But before I do that, I wanted to talk really quickly about why freshwater quarantine is important. Um, quarantine for any fish is important. It's particularly important with saltwater, where a lot of the fish are wild caught, they're very sensitive, and you can have diseases coming in on things like coral and uh, plants, or I'm sorry, not plants. You can have diseases coming in on coral in inverts as well. And in the case of saltwater, marine ick is the biggest thing that people are on the lookout for. It's very difficult to cure before it comes to you. Whereas freshwater fish I find are a little bit easier to treat. Um, they can be treated a little bit more quickly, which helps a lot. Um, and having a good source for them also helps a lot, as well as having a source that medicates them and having them captive bred. Most freshwater fish are captive bred, which somewhat reduces what they're exposed to. That being said, no matter what, if they're going to a, a local fish store, the fish store can do the very best that they can possibly try, and diseases are still going to come in. There's just so many fish in and out. So regardless of whether you're doing just like, you know, a $5 Tetra or, I don't know, even cheaper than that sometimes, or a very expensive fish like discus or some cichlids, one fish can bring in a disease and can wipe out an entire tank. So I think that some kind of quarantine process is important. So this is what I have going on for mine. Dun, dun, dun. I know, I know, the fish police are already angry. It's a bull. <gasps> Heaven forbid! Yes, it is. It's a three-gallon bowl. You can see right now I've got a neon blue garami. Now, before we go on and on about the fact that it's a bowl, let's uh, bring two things to your attention. Number one, there's a sponge filter. And number two, it's heated. Right now, this tank is at 82 degrees. And the reason for that is I'm slowly bringing that garami up to 84 degrees, which is how warm I keep my discus tank. It is a small tank. But by having a small volume of water that allows me to reduce the amount of medication that I have to use, it saves me a lot of money. And he's going to spend like a week of his life in here. And this is less overstocked than the fish store. So, yes, it's a bowl. I don't feel too bad about it. I do need to put a top on it, though, because I have had saltwater fish jump straight out of quarantines before. Um, but I used to have a 10-gallon that I used for my... A freshwater quarantine tank and right now both my 10 gallons are being used for saltwater quarantine so that's how this bowl became my quarantine so in it I have uh, just a sponge filter now that sponge was on the intake of my main display filter and I pulled it off so that the tank would be cycled so there's always a nitrogen cycle in here ever since I set up this tank I just kind of occasionally throw some food in to make sure that I don't have any ammonia buildup because obviously it is such a small system. Um, and then when I'm done quarantining, I do 100% water change and then fill it right back up with water again and then just kind of like throw food in every once in a while. Once that filter has been in there, it's never going to go back into the display tank, obviously, because this has now been exposed to disease. Then I have a cheap heater that I have and I keep a temperature or a thermometer right here. We can see it's at about 82 Fahrenheit, which, I don't know, is about 28 degrees Celsius, I think, 27. Um, so, a couple things. One, there's a filter in there. Now, you do not have to run your quarantine tank 100% of the time. This tank was empty for quite a while, and then I started buying fish, so I pulled that little bit of media right off of um, my my filter that was in my display tank. Number two, it's got a heater. I probably should add some kind of hide, plastic plants or that kind of thing. The substrate isn't necessary, it's just there. Um, but I probably should add something for this guy to hide behind. He's hiding behind the filter right now and seems to be doing okay. So there are two different philosophies when it comes to quarantine. Some people like to quarantine and just watch for illness. I am not one of those people. I pre-treat. I just assume that every fish that's coming into my possession, especially saltwater fish, but even freshwater, has some kind of disease. So I want to treat for external and internal parasites. 
I want to treat for flukes and I want to treat for bacterial infections and fungal infections. Those are the things that can kind of get the biggest things that are kind of my concern with freshwater fish. My meds are going to be very similar to what I run in my saltwater tanks. So the first one that I run is General Cure. This is awesome. This was made popular in um, the YouTube world by Corey from Aquarium Co-op. I know that this is part of his uh, trifecta of meds that he puts every single fish through a little bit of General Cure. Now if you guys don't know, General Cure is Praziquantel and Metronidazole, which will treat um, internal and external parasites, and then the Praziquantel will treat flukes as well. So this is great. One of the nice things about having such a small quarantine tank is that I don't need a ton of this, because it's kind of expensive, but because I have such a small quarantine, it doesn't take a lot of this. Um, if you can't get your hands on this, Prozipro is a uh, prosequential and that will help treat with flukes and uh, Seachem Metroplex. I will link these down below if I can find them as well. Um, I always try to link things when I talk about them if I can remember. If not, I'm sure you can just Google it. But um, Seachem Metroplex is another one that you can use and I have used both but this is pretty easy to find. I find it at PetSmart usually. The second thing that I want to treat for is external parasites and so the biggest thing is Ick. Now, freshwater ick is a little bit less of a concern than marine ick, um, and it's treated a little bit differently. There are things that will claim that they treat marine ick. If you want to know more about marine ick, I have videos about it. Um, this med claims it does. It does not, in my opinion. It will treat some other saltwater diseases, but we don't want to get into that. So what I use is Riddick, Cordon's Riddick. Now, uh, Corey from Aquarium Co-op, who a lot of you guys might be familiar with, or a lot of YouTubers use, I um, can't remember what brand it is, Ickex. I will link both of these down below if I can find them. Um, I prefer the Riddick because it was easier for me to access, um, but both are fine. They are literally both the same active ingredients, which is... Um, Malachite green and formalin. Formalin being the, the big important one. So I love this for saltwater. I also use it for freshwater. I don't use this for saltwater ick. I use it for brooklynella and sometimes pre-treating velvet. But that's another conversation. So what I do is when I put the fish in the tank, I do a few drops of this according to what it says on the back. It says 10 drops per gallon. So I put 30 drops in there of this and then a little bit of a packet of the general cure because one packet treats 10 gallons. So I do like a third of the packet. But I do want to mention as well because you might have access to this where you live. I have used this in the past. This is Nox Ick, which is um, sodium chloride and malachite green. Now Noxic in my experience I don't like for saltwater fish. I find that malachite green is just not the most effective med. But I have used that um, on freshwater fish as well. I don't, I wouldn't do both. I would do either the Riddick or the Noxic or the Ickex. Those are the three that I've used and I'm familiar with. Now the other things that you need to be concerned about with freshwater fish, they do sometimes get fungal infections. I have yet to experience a fungal infection. Um, I have tried, or I have uh, tried pre-treating with fungal treatments, um, but I'm not currently doing that. So what I've used before is the jungle, jungle one, I think. Um, but I find that literally just doing the general cure and the Riddick gets rid of most things. The third thing that most people are concerned about are bacterial infections, and so a lot of people will use an antibiotic for that. Um, the one that YouTube tends to use is erythromycin. Now, I personally have no experience with erythromycin because I am personally allergic to it. I have used tetracycline before, um, and I plan on getting some Canaplex, which you can get, and I know that works for saltwater fish. I've never tried it on freshwater. Um, but I am not a fan of pre-treating things with antibiotics. I will treat if I see it. The thing about bacterial infections though is it's kind of a treat at your own risk kind of thing because a bacterial infection wipes out fish very, very, very quickly. So um, a lot of people also with bacterial infections will try Pemafix and Melafix. I personally have never used those. I'm just not convinced that they are particularly helpful. So um, when I do have bacterial infections, I have used tetracycline in the past, 
and my plan moving forward is to pick up some Canaplex, which is by Seachem, which you can actually medicate in the food. So what I do is I have the fish in this little three gallon bowl. I run it for a week. So I do every 24 hours, I'll do a treatment of the Riddick and then um, I'll do like a third of a container of this or a third of a packet of this and then at 48 hours later I'll do another third of a packet of this and then um, I'll be done with the general cure after that and that's it and so my fish live in here for about a week and then I transfer them over to my main tank I also keep around some aquarium salt just in case I need it but I don't typically end up having to use that so most things are taken care of with this. So that is my freshwater quarantine system. I know that a lot of people that have freshwater fish, you're not spending a lot of money on the fish. You're not necessarily even sending, spending a lot of money on the setup. You can get um, 10 gallon fish tanks, like entire systems for like 30 bucks with the filter and the lid and the light. And so I do understand that not everyone is necessarily going to quarantine all of their fish. I would recommend, say you have just a 10 gallon tank or something like that and you don't have any other stuff and you're not gonna go out and quarantine, medicate the main tank once it's completely stocked, get them all cleaned out, especially if you're buying your fish from like Petco or PetSmart. My freshwater tank has discus in it and you guys may know discus are not cheap fish. So I really want to make sure that everything that comes into that tank is clean when it comes in and is not bringing in any kinds of disease. I also have been considering adding um, a scrape and scope to this, which is way extra. That's way beyond what people need to do, but I do have access to a microscope. So it's something that I've kind of considered doing after watching some stuff about saltwater fish. But again, I know that this is way more than most people are going to do. So anyways, that's my quarantine procedure. I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments. If you quarantine your fish, what meds do you run or are you one to just watch your fish and see if there's any kind of illness? Um, and if you are one to just watch, how long do you quarantine them for? Um, subscribe so you don't miss any more videos and hit the bell next to the subscribe button. And if you never want to miss a video, hit I want all notifications or whatever because YouTube's changing things on us. Anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed and I'll talk to you soon. Bye guys.